Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you, Laura. And as Laura has indicated, I'm here today on behalf of uh, Honorable Pat Hadju, Minister of Employment, Workforce Development, and Labor. And before I get started, I want to say uh, thank you to the town of Inubik and the mayor for letting us use this space. And uh, thank you to Mr. Dwayne Smith of IRC and Mr. Jordan Peterson for the GTC, uh, from the G GTC for being here. And uh, wanted to thank them for all the amazing work that they do along with our organizations. And I know the communities really benefit from everything that they're involved with. And I also have to thank them for taking to the time to fit their schedule into mine and everybody else for joining us here today. Um, on behalf of the Government of Canada and as the Member of Parliament, I want to say thank you for supporting the Indigenous people in the Inuvialuit and Gwich'in regions of the NBT and help them gain meaningful workplace training experience. And our government is committed to renewing, to a renewed nation to nation relationship with the Indigenous people based on recognition of rights, respect, and cooperation. As you know, many talented and experienced Indigenous peoples are looking for good jobs and they have to deal with a great deal. They have a great deal to offer employers, but often face barriers to employment. So we want to make sure that everybody that's looking for work has the opportunity to do so. And that's where the Skills Partnership Fund or the SPF comes in. Organizations such as yours, whose projects allow participants to get the skills upgrading, uh, they need to get good jobs, gain the knowledge and confidence to launch their own businesses, have been recipients of SPF funding. The government knows the value of these partnerships and will roll out new SPF projects this fiscal year. The projects being announced here today are two of these uh, very exciting new projects. And I commend your organizations for taking on these initiatives and on your success of being awarded this funding. On behalf of Canada, it gives me great pleasure to announce the following project. The Inuvaluit Regional Corporation will receive $826,984 through the Skills Partnership Fund for the Licensed Practical Nurse Program. This will test an innovative approach by delivering a licensed practical nurse program to 18 Indigenous people that will also address social, socioeconomic barriers faced by participants. We need more qualified health professionals in our communities and in the North. This is true now more than ever as our population ages. To have local care providers who live here who know their clients will be a fantastic addition to our health care system. Second, it gives me great pleasure to announce that the Gwich'in Tribal Council will receive $4,553,000 also from the Skills Partnership Fund. This project will provide employment and essential skill training to 80 Indigenous people in the Gwich'in communities. The project will provide activities and training focused on addressing socioeconomic challenges improving labor force attachment and providing innovative program delivered to all participants. The participants face multiple socioeconomic barriers and the program will include specialized delivery that will help overcome barriers such as low literacy and income assistance dependency. With creative new approaches, we can give people tools to allow them to succeed in our workforce. These efforts will create more uh, good jobs and will help Indigenous Canadians to find good employment. So thank you all for joining me here today and congratulations to both. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Now I'd like to invite <coughs> GTC Deputy Chief Jordan Peterson to speak about the Tai Trigwatsi Breaking Trails Program. Thank you, Laura, and thank you, Michael. Um, 
I have you said that a little better than I probably was practicing <laughs> earlier. Um, but I um, wanted to thank uh, the Government of Canada um, and Mr. McLeod's office for, for this announcement today. Um, but more importantly, wanting to thank our staff, um, Verna, Robert, and, and the many others that have been involved in this and ensuring the success in our application. Um, $4.5 million into our communities and, and training is, 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 is uh, quite the announcement and, and, and really quite something to achieve. So um, my hat's off to you. Um, you know, as, as one of the speakers of our organization, we're up here to, to discuss um, these types of announcements, but all of the hard work comes from our staff and ensuring that our participants have the opportunity to take a program such as this. So uh, in terms of the program of uh, Ta'ai Trigwaitsi, um, it's an eight-month pro training program which is going to be delivered in Klavik, Fort McPherson, and Inuvik, and Sigachik. Um, it's going to incorporate Gwich'in traditional knowledge, essential life skills, um, adult, be adult basic education, and workplace essential skills with also entrepreneurship. Uh, the program is, is essentially designed to assist in mobilizing Gwich'in participants to move away from unemployment, low literacy levels, dependency on income assistance, and other systemic barriers towards a path for personal success. Um, when I had first come on to the Gwich'in Tribal Council four years ago, uh, one of the first questions I received from an elder who's actually here in the back was, what does it mean to be proud to be Gwich'in? And um, from, the Gwich'in, from the Gwich'in traditional knowledge piece, I'm really looking forward to their one-week uh, cultural awareness workshop on Lemma. Um, it's an important aspect that we all need to ensure that we ask ourselves on a regular basis um, due to the effects of residential school and, and, and colonialism on not only our, our culture, but our language and, and, and who we are essentially as, as Indigenous people. So once again, I want to thank all of you um, looking forward to the IRC's program and, and it being successful in 32 months or so. And um, looking forward to working with all of you to ensure that when um, Mr. McLeod comes up here, he's always coming up with at least $5 million. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. Now I would like to invite Mr. Dwayne Smith, Chair of the Nuviala Regional Corporation, to talk about the Licensed Practical Nursing Program. Arigah. Arigah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, in relation to this announcement and uh, What's taking place today? It's it continues to be a, a breaking trail, if I could borrow that term from the Gwich'in uh, project. Congratulations to the GTC and all of the hard work for you in getting that. Because anytime you're developing the capacity uh, within the region, the communities, it helps everybody. But congratulations to you on that and uh, all the success in that project as it proceeds. Uh, thank you all for taking the time out as well. I'd like to thank our uh, Member of Parliament, uh, Michael McLeod, for making the effort to get all the way up here and all the support that uh, he's provided in the achievement and the success uh, of getting these two projects to where they're at. So thank you to our Member of Parliament. Uh, we continue to hope to work with you on uh, pursuing new endeavours uh, where it might be mutually beneficial. But again, uh, uh, I think uh, this is continuing to build on our renewed relationship with the federal government and the adequate and proper implementation of our respective land claims within this region. And we, continue, we hope to continue to pursue that because, like I keep saying, uh, there's the Gutchin land claim, the Innovao land claim, it's not either parties. Uh, the federal governments are signatory to that and they also have a responsibility. So this is a partnership that we're taking down this path together to work with each other for proper Im implementation. And in this respect, it's in regards to capacity building, skill development, uh, contributing to the communities and the society at large. 
uh, we hope and uh, plan to make our project as successful as it can be. As you've heard uh, recently, we've got even more interest uh, uh, coming pretty well on a daily basis in regards to applying for this uh, practical nurse program, which demonstrates the interest uh, within this field and the recognition of the need, uh, not only within our region, but also within the territory, uh, especially around long-term care needs. Uh, the, the age is uh, growing, uh, the need is getting more demanding, so we need to develop and redevelop uh, pursuits around these types of services that are proactive and supportive to the communities. And when I say proactive, it's uh, building the capacity in the community, uh, working closely with the Indigenous organizations so that we could uh, develop these kind of programs and services together so that we're contributing to the society and as well as uh, being meaningf meaningful, uh, active, healthy uh, individuals that uh, our children will look up to. And like the elder in the back, I mean, you know, the youth today, she's done a lot of hard work through her life. They know her because of what she's done in the past. They look up to her. So what we're trying to do here is maintain and enhance that type of uh, recognition and a part of our culture. But again, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the staff, uh, my staff, for all their hard work in getting this to where it is. But uh, we all know, just like negotiating, the implementation part is where the real hard work comes in now, and we have to make sure it's as successful as it can be. Thank you to the college uh, for their uh, work with us. We look forward to working with them and the facilities uh, to make sure that... Uh, it's adaptable enough to make it as successful as it can be. But again, thank you very much to our Member of Parliament and others for taking the time out. Kuyanaini.